So my name is Travis, and my purpose of being here is to eliminate our scarcity mindset through acts of service and community so we can achieve our mission to heal one million dry eye sufferers naturally. Travis's evolution has been really interesting because he was in the back room a few years ago, took a break, uh, dated a couple other groups, and then came back. And a few years ago, he was an Amazon seller. And there's a lot of Amazon sellers who think they're business owners, but never make the pivot into running a real business. The great thing is we just went over that eight-figure exit plan and the three-circle strategy, which is bringing together audience and products and sales channel. And we started this business focusing on sales channel. How, how do we come out with another product on Amazon that can get a lot of sales and get a lot of revenue? And Travis is starting to do the really hard work of taking what was selling on Amazon into building a real company. And seeing the light bulb come on and seeing how he could take this sales machine that's doing well. He's, he's done something great with that idea and that business and that direction and see him get how he could take that and build it into something that was really scalable and attractive and sellable and exciting by working less. Yeah, so most of the companies that are in our space are pharmaceutical companies. And so they're, they're publicly traded companies, they focus on profits and revenues, and I don't think they care as much about what they're putting in their patients' bodies like we do. We now have a group full of dry eye sufferers that's about 10,000 strong right now. And we're also talking to other influencers in our space to bring them in to help us grow and scale even faster. So um, to give you a backstory on this, I have an influencer in our space. He's got about 104,000 subscribers on YouTube and growing by about 500 per day. And so he's growing incredibly fast. And we, we talk, we interview each other on each other's channels. Um, and he's a really good guy. He's an optometrist as well, so another eye doctor. And I want to approach him possibly for a deal to become part of Isla. Yeah, so with, with this influencer on YouTube, we were at 20,000 subscribers together. And we kind of joked and said we should do a competition to 100,000. And at the time, we were getting more subscribers per day, but he just took off at a whole new level. And we're at 33,000 now, and he's at 105,000. And is he influential? Meaning like... About dry eye? The skill set that I've developed as a result of doing a lot of these is being able to hear what's not being said. And in doing so, find out what the entrepreneur really wants. I want to approach him from bringing him into the company, how to structure that equity deal, and then how to even pay him like a per video or a salary basis to get him out of what he's doing and to bring him into ILO to help grow ILO. I see a lot in him, what I saw in myself. Optometry, I loved seeing patients. I loved making the impact, but I didn't like the one-on-one -on -one setting. I, I like helping a lot of people and you can't do that one-to-one. -one. It's just, it's, it's time consuming. And I can see that frustration in him right now. And so giving him an opportunity where he can overcome that frustration and get the outlet that he wants, I think that's gonna be huge for him and then hopefully huge for us as well. We come to the table usually saying, you know what I need help with is, I need help finding my next marketing employee. Or I need help coming up with my next product idea. And when you really listen to what somebody is saying, and they say what they really want, there's something much bigger and a much longer story about how they got to the conclusion that that was the thing that they needed most. And if you understand that, you get a lot more context for where the business is, and you can change much more fundamental things about the person and the business, rather than just address the short-term tactic that they think they're stressed about. Strategy is the biggest thing. Strategy with the back room, is why I rejoined the back room. So I was in the back room for two years, got a lot out of that. It took me from 1 million up to 3 million, or about 2.4 million. And I left the back room for about a year and joined other ones and it was all tactic driven. And so there were tactics and the tactics were great and they just didn't seem like they would move the needle as much as I wanted. So that's why I came back. And now I'm back in the back room and just day one proved more beneficial than the last year and six other meetings in my other masterminds combined. The CEOs of really big $100 million, billion dollar companies are not 
posing in front of Ferraris and Lamborghinis saying hustle. They, they are, their lives actually probably look pretty boring, but they have space for the big breakthroughs. And a lot of the group is starting to have the realization that they have been working or thinking so much that they didn't have room for the next breakthrough. And that the most ROI positive thing they could do was create space for the next breakthrough.